Hey everybody, uh, here I'm going to show you how I finished your second fabric project with colored pencil on the left and marker on the right. Keeping in mind that you could use any other uh, dry medium for your uh, to companion to pair with your colored pencils. You don't have to use marker. During class, I demonstrated to you guys the marker side, and I started with a uh, chartreuse base, and then I added shadows of the Copic markers. I made sure to leave bright white highlights, and I'm also using a pink color to add some uh, lowering saturation to the shadows and give it a little bit more depth that way. I went ahead and tried to lay in a bunch of colors to get a medium tone for the background. And now, since I don't have to wait for each side to dry, I'm gonna switch over to colored pencil and I'm gonna use a bunch of those to get a similar tone. Now, I don't have the exact green that the markers have, so I'm using two or three greens, uh, a yellow green, a dark green, and a blue green kind of get the same color tone. And the wax in the colored pencils is very shiny, so the colors don't look like they match as much in the uh, video as they do in person. But they matched a lot better, and you'll be able to see that in person in class. The I went ahead and started darkening with another dark green, blending it out, and also blending out with some blue greens and some yellow greens to try and match that up with the other side. Now I'm putting in the grounding, so I'm adding a little bit of paint and using a lot of colorless blender to make that background nice and soft. And then I'm going to move back over into the shadows and darken some of those up, kind of punch it up a little bit, and continue to work on making sure some of those edges really fold over and round over and everything looks really nice. I'm going to move over to the colored pencil side and do the same thing over here, adding dark shadows and some ground around the edges and some background. And when I did the colored pencil side, I kind of forgot to make the, the little part all the way on the left dark. So I come back in with my dark color and when I'm making the shadows darker, I'm gonna make that whole edge darker here in a bit. Uh, when I'm using colored pencils, I, I usually use a small arrangement of colors and keep them on hand and switch back and forth. Again, this color looks a lot more like the marker side than it seems to at the moment. And it, you can see it's getting a little bit closer as I start to add the darker colors. I also test right here. I'm testing a marker gray next to a gray colored pencil. And I'm trying to get a, a more desaturated uh, tone to the shadows. So I add gray on both sides. And I'm trying to keep them kind of matching in tone and quality. I also am going to leave half of this colored pencil side as colored pencil, and half of this colored pencil side I'm going to put mineral spirits on. So at the end I just punch up the, the dark darks on the marker side because I did a better job punching up the colored pencil side. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some mineral spirits. I'm going to divide that colored pencil side in half, and I'm going to just gently apply mineral spirits with the blender and I don't want to push too hard because this is on Bristol so it doesn't really absorb very well. So I really don't want to kind of oversaturate the paper. Um, you can see that now that the mineral spirits are on here I get a really good color match with the other side. And you can also use, uh, after you've used the mineral spirits, you can go ahead and use the colored pencils again and blend out a little bit more. Uh, and that is both the colored pencil and the marker start to finish. See you in class.